Hello, UCAR. Peter Christensen here, coming to you from the CEO's desk. We are talking today, we're, we're finishing up the quick hitters on agency. So I think we've covered everything, and we're to the last uh, of the duties you have under agency. And that is reasonable care and diligence. So this is the broadest of the uh, duties you have uh concerning agency. And they give us some specifics in, uh, in Utah's code. They, they, talk, they mention specifically holding safe money and property for the client and any additional uh, duties created by the agency agreement. So they point to those specifically. But really, the reasonable care and diligence uh, standard is, is really just being a competent agent. So we don't have many minimum service uh, rules in Utah. We have a few, but not many. And uh, but this kind of covers that. Like you know, you got to give a certain level that's that's uh, deemed reasonable uh, of care to your client. And so you know, big mistakes, um, not really knowing uh, what you're doing. That could fall under this. It could be a breach of your agency relationship, according to the division uh, and and court the court system, quite frankly. And uh, so, holding safe money, property, you know, that's earnest money. That's uh, uh, probably could cover not protecting from wire fraud. Um, use of the property could fall under this. So, if you're not uh, safeguarding the wishes of, say, a seller in how a property is uh, shown and when and whether proper safeties are put in place with the keys, uh, that type of, of thing could be covered under this um, duty. And then any additional duties created by the agency agreement. So this is an interesting one because divisions of real estate seem to give great deference to how they'll apply this reasonable care and diligence according to what's promised. And so really, we want a client to be satisfied and get the service they believe they were going to get, right? And so expectations are met. So how you set those expectations is in the agency agreement. And I continually preach, get those signed earlier than, rather than later, especially on the buyer side. I mean, seller side... You don't really list the property without an agency agreement, so that's kind of the beginning of the relationship. But in the buyer side, we see more uh, of a delay sometimes in getting those signed. But this is really where you can create your agency expectations, and truly, uh, you'll be you'll be held to those when being measured uh, against this reasonable care and diligence standard. So. Things you won't do, will do, uh, additional uh, obligations you may pick up can all be contained in that agency agreement. So those are important. They have important informa information. Get them signed. That's how the whole agency uh, concept comes about uh, or should come about and should be consummated in the agency agreement and getting it signed. So hopefully as you go through these videos, as we talk about all the different obligations agency creates and the nature of an agency relationship, you're going to get those signed, those agency agreements, and explain them so that everybody's on the same page and, ev and the, the expectations of the client align with the services that are being rendered by the uh, agent and brokerage. Remember, this is not specific legal advice. This is legal information only. If you need specific legal advice, please contact your attorney. Thanks for tuning in.